So we left off on this electrochemical cell. Again, anode, cathode. The electrons are going to flow from the anode to the cathode. We have a positive enode of the cell, and we have a galvanic or voltaic cell, meaning that is spontaneous. Now, we have a shorthand version of this called line notation, and this makes our lives much easier. All right, so we can write a shorthand for electrochemical cell. Now, we know the electrochemical cell we um, designate here as a couple of beakers. They are connected by a salt bridge. This is, allows us to complete the circuit. We know they've got wires in it. The wires are the electrodes, and then there's contents inside the beakers. The contents inside the beakers are either going to be aqueous or they're going to be a gas. Now, we know that our anode is on the left and our cathode is on the right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go back to our reaction. So for our reaction of um, Ag plus, plus an electron goes into Ag, we know that that was the cathode, and Cu2 plus plus two electrons goes into Cu. This is going to be our anode. And what we're going to do is we're going to write this diagram here in a shorthand form. So we've got two things. Two lines is a salt bridge. One line is separation by phase. On the far left is the electrode at the anode. On the far right is the electrode at the cathode. Remembering here that this reaction is the anode. This is the cathode. So what we're going to start out here is copper is a cell. The electrons are going to come off the copper. Inside the beaker of our half reaction at the anode is copper 2 plus. That is the end of the contents of the side that is our anode. So we're going to have a two line indicating our salt bridge. Contents of the beaker at the cathode, which are going to be Ag plus. And then the final thing is the electrode at the cathode and the electrode at the cathode is Ag as a solid. Now, if you have a gas in there, you're going to have to have one more line in the gas as well, but most of them are going to be fairly straightforward. Electrode, contents of the beaker, salt bridge, contents of the beaker, electrode, anode on the left, cathode on the right. So we have used metal electrodes that are part of the solution as these, but sometimes we cannot use these. If we have for example, everything aqueous. So for example, if we are looking at the standard hydrogen electrode, H, 2H plus plus two electrons goes into H2 as a gas. This is our standard hydrogen electrode. And with our standard hydrogen electrode, there is no metal electrode that's already in there. So we are going to use platinum. This is a designation. In reality, we probably can't afford platinum, but if we have to, we're gonna do PT as a solid as our electrode. Why? Because it's inert. So if I were to do the reaction where I had magnesium in contact with magnesium 2 plus, and I had the standard hydrogen electrode, and I want this reaction to be galvanic, and I want to do both the cell diagram, which is right here, it's our picture, as well as the line notation, what I'm going to have here is my magnesium is going to lose two electrons to go into uh, magnesium two plus. And these two electrons are going to be gained by the hydrogen to make hydrogen as a gas, where this is going to be my anode where the oxidation occurs and my cathode is going to be the standard hydrogen electrode. So what would we do? Well, we take a piece of magnesium in a solution of magnesium such that magnesium is free to be part of the reaction. The electrons would flow towards the cathode. Now cathode here would be the standard hydrogen electrode, which does not have a metal in it. So we're going to put a piece of platinum in here. And it's going to have to be um, in a solution of one molar HCl, because you remember standard is one molar and one ATM. And then we're going to have bubbles here of one ATM hydrogen as a gas. So this would be the cell diagram of our electrochemical cell and our line diagram would be our electrode on the left, magnesium, 
contents of the cell, magnesium 2 plus, two lines to separate it from our cathode. When we separate it from our cathode, we have acid in solution at one molar, but because we have hydrogen as a gas, we need one more line, H2 as a gas, and then finally the electrode on the cathode side, which is platinum. So let's see if we can calculate the cell potential for this reaction. To do the cell potential, we are looking, first of all, for a galvanic reaction. Galvanic means it's going to be spontaneous, and it also means that as you go down your standard cell reduction potentials, the first reaction you find you're going to designate as your cathode. The second reaction that you find off of your two reactions in your equation is going, are going to be your anode. And to get the cell potential, you're going to take the E naught at the cathode, subtract the E naught at the anode, and for this reaction, E naught your cell is going to equal zero minus a minus 2.37, and you're going to get a positive 2.37 volts. Magnesium readily dissolves in strong acid, one molar acid, in a very positive potential. So we can take and calculate this, giving ourselves positive 2.37 volts. This is going to be spontaneous. Or another way to look at this is if you put solid magnesium in a one molar solution of acid, magnesium would lose its electrons. It would oxidize. We could even say that it will dissolve because magnesium 2 plus is soluble. And it would dissolve in the one molar acid and hydrogen gas would be produced. So if we look at these, we can look at our potentials and conclude a great deal about the reaction. So E naught for the standard reduction potential, so gaining our electrons, so for example, Mg2 plus plus two electrons goes into Mg is going to be for this reaction as written, as reduction. And we notice that this was a negative 2.37 volts. This is not spontaneous. These reactions are reversible and this reaction when it's reversed is going to be very spontaneous, which is why we are subtracting it as the anode. So the more positive the E naught is, the greater the tendency is for the substance to be reduced. The more negative it is, the greater the tendency for the reaction to be reversed and the product to be oxidized. Please note that this is a potential or a driving force. We do not balance the equation and we do not change the stoichiometric coefficients. So do not balance these reactions. So let's take a look at one of these. So first of all, if we want to have the reaction of zinc plus copper two plus goes into copper plus zinc two plus at standard conditions, we want to have a galvanic cell. When you want to find these potentials, you're going to look at them on the charts and you're going to find that when you find the value for Cu2 plus plus two electrons goes into Cu, it has a potential of 0.34 volts. And then when we look and find zinc2 plus two electrons goes into zinc, it has a potential of minus 0.76 volts. So the more positive one is going to be the anode, the more negative, the more positive one is going to be the cathode, the more negative one is going to be the anode, and we are going to take our E naught for our cell and make it E naught at the cathode, subtracting E naught at the anode, and this is going to be 0.34 volts minus a minus 7, 6 for a total of positive 1.10 volts, the E naught for this cell. The line diagram is going to be zinc, a solid piece of metal making it the wire in a solution of zinc 2 plus separated from the cathode, which is going to be copper 2 plus separated by Cu. This is going to be a solid. So let's see if we can look through this and learn something about what is going to want to be reduced, what is going to want to be oxidized, and how this is going to affect the reactivity. So at the top of the charts, we have fluorine. Fluorine is going to spontaneously gain electrons. And by spontaneously gaining electrons, it is going to cause oxidation. 
So the species at the top of this reaction or the top of this chart are the strongest oxidizing agents. Now, down at the bottom, we know the reverse reaction wants to occur. That lithium wants to lose electrons to make lithium plus. When it does that, it's going to have a potential of positive 3.04 volts. So what lithium wants to do is it wants to be oxidized. And by being oxidized, it is going to cause reduction. So our charts are tabulated as the strongest oxidizing agent being up here at the top of this chart. And anything here will oxidize anything below it to the right. Meaning, for example, permanganate will oxidize. Remove electrons from chloride or water or bromide or silver, anything below it to the right. Equally, anything down here on the right will reduce anything above it to the left, meaning that lithium will lose electrons or give electrons up to K plus or Na plus or N Mg2 plus. And so by looking at the chart, we can figure out what is going to actually react. So anything at the top left will oxidize. Anything below it to the right, going to the products, and anything to the right here at the bottom, the products, will reduce anything above it to the left. So if we look at this, and this is walking ourselves straight down our chart, we want to know what is the most easily oxidized, meaning what is going to lose electrons the most easily? Well, the stuff that is going to be up here is going to be most readily reduced. So the stuff down here is going to be most readily oxidized, meaning aluminum is going to be most easily oxidized and will be the strongest on this chart, reducing agent. Now, what is capable of reducing iron? Well, anything below it to, here I should have written iron 2 plus. Um, anything below it to the right can reduce iron 2 plus. So both zinc and aluminum can reduce iron 2 plus. Now, we need to set up a cell between copper and zinc. So if we find our copper and our zinc and we want a cell, we know that what we're going to have is the first one is going to be the cathode. Second one we find here is going to be the anode, and we've seen this one, and we know that that's going to give us zinc, zinc 2 plus, copper 2 plus, copper as our line diagram, and the E naught of our cell will be the E naught at the cathode, 0.34, minus E naught at the anode, minus a minus 0.76 or 1.10 volts. What will the cell diagram for this look like? Well, we know the anode is zinc. The zinc is going to lose electrons. And by the way, when it does this, this um, electrode will physically corrode. It will actually reduce in size as the solid zinc comes off of it, making more zinc 2 plus. So the concentration of the zinc 2 plus is going to go up. The electrode is going to corrode and the electrons are going to flow over. Now, another way of designating the salt bridge is just to say it's a porous disc or a porous plug, which just kind of makes it easier to draw, but it's the same as a salt bridge. Now, what's going to happen is the electrons are going to build up on the copper electrode. The copper 2 plus is physically going to come along here, and when it picks up the, electro, the electrons, it is actually going to make a layer of copper outside this, and this copper on the outside is going to, um, you're going to electroplate or build up a layer of copper here. And the concentration of copper 2 plus is therefore going to go down. This reaction will be spontaneous. Electrons flowing towards the right with a potential of 1.10 volts.